Okay, so let's talk about another test, the alternating series test. Let's start this section, 11.5, and define what an alternating series is. This is a series whose terms alternate in sign. They have a switch. So they alternate in sign. They have something like negative 1 to the k minus 1 uh, times b sub k, b sub k being this, the magnitude, the size of the terms without the alternating sign. Or you could start with index uh, negative 1 to the k. Uh, I wrote k minus 1 on this one, but it could also be k plus 1, and this guy has the, the k on it. So you've got the alternating sign, and just as a quick little note, b sub k itself is actually the absolute value of the, the terms without the switch. So this is the absolute value. of the terms without the switch. Okay, so getting rid of the sign that's, that changes back and forth. Okay, so if that is true, if we have an alternating series and we find b sub k, and it turns out that b sub k is eventually decreasing, then if the limit of b sub k equals zero, the series will converge, and if it does not equal zero, we actually will bounce out of the alternating series and go to the divergence test to show divergence. I'm going to talk about the remainder in a second video, so let's hold off on the comments, but we can actually use an estimate here. So if we use the first n terms to estimate, we can come up with what the remainder is. It's actually a very simple remainder um, and estimation theorem, so it's it's nice. With the alternating series, we can, we can use the remainder theorem to find some estimates. But we will do that in another video after we've already done a couple examples of the alternating series. So let me just start with this. To apply the alternating series, we want to just go through uh, two, two little steps here. So let's just write up the steps. So to apply the alternating series, AST for short. So to apply the alternating series test, what we want to do is first we want to figure out what that b sub k is. So we're going to take our a sub k. Well, first of all, we have to make sure that it fits the criteria, I guess, that it is an alternating series. So we take a series, a sub k. It doesn't really matter where it starts. So we just take, so I'm not even going to put the indexes on it. Just take a series where a sub k alternates in sign. has a switch, you know, like a negative 1 to the k or something of this nature, and find b sub k. So we just define, find or define, I mean, I guess you could also say it that way, find or define b sub k. And b sub k is simply the absolute value of a sub k. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Then we're going to examine that new series of terms, b sub k, that have no switch on them, and we're going to look at two things. Okay, so to apply the test, we're going to show two criteria. Show that b sub k meet uh, not like meat that you're going to eat, but actually meet two criteria. All right. So the first criteria, and I'll make a little box because we're going to check this criteria. First criteria we check is that B sub K is decreasing. So we show that B sub K plus one is less than or equal to B sub K for k greater than or equal to some capital N. Now, it turns out, as we have talked about with these decreasing, as we like with the integral test that we talked about, uh, b sub k is decreasing. It turns out it just has to be eventually. Okay. I won't go into that again, but just eventually. It doesn't have to always happen. You can take out the first couple terms. And the second criteria that has to be checked is that the limit as k approaches infinity of b sub k equals zero. And let's make a little star. Let's actually change that star to red because I want to make a little note. Star 
if the limit as k approaches infinity of b sub k does not equal zero, then I want to I want to bounce out to the divergence test and use the divergence test to talk about divergence. So then check the divergence test for divergence of a sub k. Okay, so keep in mind that if this second criteria, and sometimes we actually look at the second criteria first, because if it's obvious that the limit does not go to zero, then there's no reason to even look at if it's decreasing or not, um, and most likely it won't be decreasing. So we can sometimes bump to the second one, and then it takes us actually to the divergence test. So quick little note on that. The alternating series test itself will not give us divergence, but it can give us a clue to bump out to the divergence test. So I'll highlight that. So this, remember that the alternating series test itself will not give us divergence, but it can give us a clue that we need to go over to the divergence test and apply it. So those are the steps for applying the alternating series test. So let's just do two quick little examples in this video of the alternating series test and show, uh, show how we apply those steps. So the first one, if we were to take, let's zoom in a little bit here. If we were to take negative one to the K plus one over K, obviously pretty clear that this is an alternating series, alternating series. And in fact, this is what we actually call the alternating harmonic series. If we were to write this out, this would be one minus one half plus one third minus one fourth plus one fifth and so on. This is the alternating harmonic series. Kind of a kind of a nice um, connection to the actual harmonic series, which we actually showed diverged. But this particular series with this alternating sign is actually going to do something else. So it's kind of an interesting connection to that harmonic series that we've actually examined before. So let's get in here. So the first thing we do is we say, well, what is my b sub k? So we're going to we're going to go ahead and take a look at b sub k. So the first thing we do is just define our b sub k. b sub k is going to be the absolute value of a sub k, which was the series in our terms, the series of terms. Of course, just applying an absolute value that just knocks off the switch and we just get one over k. So as we're going through our steps here, we're gonna be looking at one over k. And then the first thing we have to ask is, is this decreasing? Okay. And how do we show that it's decreasing? Well, we, we have a couple of ways to show it. We could go into function notation and we could show that the connected function to this is derivative is less than, uh, zero negative decreasing or we could just come up with an inequality if that's possible and in this case that is definitely possible because we could say this we could say well take a look k plus one is always bigger than k for k greater than or equal to one and that means that one over k plus one has to be less than one over k so the b sub k plus one term is less than the b sub k term okay so the you know, the second term is less than the first term, the third term is less than uh, the second term, and so, so on and so forth. So this definitely satisfies the decreasing box. So we'll put a check next to that box. So we're definitely decreasing, okay? Say it in two spots. So we meet the first criteria. So let's check out if we are also meet the criteria that the limit as k approaches zero of b sub k equals zero. So now that's the question. So what is the limit of our terms? And this is a fairly obvious one, the limit as we, not as we go to zero, as we go to infinity. The limit as we go to infinity of b sub k equals zero. So we're going to infinity of one over k, and this is definitely zero. So we meet that criteria. Those two pieces together are the criteria for the alternating series. So then we can say, well, then, therefore, the series itself, now not, not one over k, in fact, by the way, we know that, that the series of just one over k without the switch, the harmonic series, diverges, but the series with the switch that meets these two criteria, we can say, therefore, 
by the alternating series test, because it's met the criteria for the alternating series test, the series negative 1 to the k plus 1 of k equals 1 to infinity over k converges, converges. And so 1 over k diverges, but the series uh, with the switch on it, negative 1 to the k plus 1 over k converges. All right. Um, kind of just want to take a sidebar here for one second and mention that while we have convergence, this is actually what we call conditional convergence. And what that means is that it depends on that switch. We're going to explore this idea of conditional versus absolute convergence in the next section, but this is just the first, our first little example where we've actually had something of this um, type of convergence, where the series itself, if you took if you took away the switch, it would actually diverge, but as soon as you put the switch back on, you have convergence. But it depends. It's completely conditional upon the fact that it has a switch on it. So it is convergence. It's just not as strong a convergence as other types of convergence, the, the absolute convergence. All right. Again, that's going to come up a little more in the next section, but um, wanted to just mention that since we already know that in um, without the switch that this particular series would not converge. Let's check out just one more example on this video. So let's take a look at this guy. So if we're taking a look at this one, first thing we notice is, again, very clearly an alternating series. So it's very much an alternating series and thinking to myself, well, what then would be my B sub N? If this is the alternating series, let's see if it satisfies the alternating series test. So take a look at this. Absolute value just takes away the switch and we end up with n squared over n squared plus 5. And now we have to take a look at two different pieces in order to apply the alternating series test for convergence. So the first thing we would want to show is, is this decreasing? So does b sub n plus 1, is b sub n plus 1 less than b sub n? Now in order to do that, again, um, there are two ways that you could show that. And we could go with, so to show decreasing, we could go with, you can show that uh, you actually have B sub N. You could, you could use an inequality. Let me just write it that way. So you could use an inequality. The inequality won't work out perfectly here for us. And so therefore, what would actually be a better way to do it would be to use uh, a function and show, I should say this, use F of, k equals b sub k and show that the derivative is less than zero for k greater than or equal to some capital N. Okay, so that is what I would do here if I wanted to show decreasing, but I'm going to skip that part for just a second because it has to meet two conditions. So if it doesn't meet the other condition, and I'm looking ahead a little bit here, the other thing we have to show is does the limit of as n goes to infinity of b sub n equals zero. That's the other thing that we have to show. Um, real quick on this one, I just noticed that I used k's over here, but we were actually using n's. So let's just write this as little n. Instead of k. Okay, so we're using n's on this particular series. So we have to show this piece right here, and I'm looking at this b sub n, and I can see right away that this b sub n is not actually going to equal zero. So I can't even apply the alternating series test here, because if I, as I take the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over n squared plus 5, I actually get 1 over 1, or 1. Uh, again, a couple of ways to show that if you wanted to. You could use uh, L'Hopital's rule, or you could use uh, divide everything by n squared, or I just looked at it and I said, this is the degree, 
the degree of two, I compared the degree of the two polynomials, the degree of P of N equals the degree of Q of N. And from Calc 1 limit stuff, that is, means that it's the ratio of the two coefficients of the two polynomials. So that's, that's how I applied it. I will make a note, and I do want you guys to make a note in your work as well. Uh, regardless of how you take these limits, make sure you show me how you do it. Okay? Or use L'Hopital's rule or whatever you want to do here, but show me how you get those limits. So this limit is actually equal to 1, which is very much not equal to 0. So the answer here is no. Right? No, it does not. So I can't apply the alternating series test. So who cares if this is decreasing or not? I don't believe it actually is. But we are going to have to just bump out and look at something else. So then what we do is we say, well, then by the actual divergence test, not the alternating series test, but by the divergence test, since the absolute value of a sub k, b sub k, the limit as n approaches, I keep wanting to use k's and it's actually n, uh, b sub n, the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n equals 1, then the series with the switch on it, okay, the series negative 1 to the n of n squared over n squared plus 5, diverges. Okay. The series itself, if the, if the limit of b sub n equals 1, then the series diverges since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n oscillates. It doesn't have, it doesn't exist. Let's write it this way. Doesn't exist through oscillation. And going back to that word of oscillation and talking about how sequences, the sequence of terms here does not have a limit, right? The limit doesn't exist. If the limit of its absolute value goes to 1, when you throw on the switch, well, then it's going to oscillate between negative and positive 1. So it, it oscillates to, if you want to even add that in, oscillates between negative 1 and positive 1, okay? So we actually are getting divergence here, but it's through the divergence test, okay? Not through the alternating series test. The alternating series test gave us a clue. So the alternating series test gave us a clue to use the divergence test. Okay. So just to be clear there, this is not the, the justification for divergence here is not alternating series, it's divergence test. All right. So those are our two, those are two examples to start off the alternating series section. And just remember, if we're going to apply this alternating series test, those are the things that we're looking at. So we take a take our series, take off the take off the switch with the absolute value, and then examine what happens to the absolute value if that sequence of terms is both decreasing and the limit equals zero, then the series itself must converge through the alternating series test. Now if the limit does not use the divergence test. Go to the divergence test and see if you can get divergence through the divergence test. All right, we'll come back and we will take a look at those remainder estimates in the second video.